Shaw, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Um, firstly, tell us how it feels to be back in the West Indies. Sure. It's nice to be outside South Africa. Um, Travelling to my favourite... Well, I haven't been on holiday. I've only come here for cricket. Uh, but I've had some good memories in the West Indies, so it's nice to be back. No longer a player, but as a coach. How does it feel to be back here? How's the nostalgia? Yeah, flying in, just speaking and talking to the locals at the airport. A few of the guys reminded me of a special moment that happened in 2005. So it's like to be back. I enjoy the Caribbean. I used to enjoy playing and coaching as well. I was here in 2016. Mm. Yeah, I'm speaking under correction, but we came here with a triangle, which played against Australia, so that's my memories from my coaching, but playing days were dif different. Speaking of your playing days, tell us about that moment when you took, well, not one moment, the series of moments, the hat-trick that you took um, here in the West Indies, and take us through how you went about that and the feeling that came from that. Yeah, it was, it was a tight game. It's, um, Bravo was batting and uh, Bradshaw, yeah, he's the guy that won him the champion's trophy uh, so he could bat as well So um, and it came down to the last over and the chap was we were fairly relaxed because the game was more in their favour so the pressure was more on them to win the game um, the wicket was keeping low so I felt like with the with the ball I had that was reversing, I still have the ball. It's split, so the seam was split. So I thought he has to hit it in the middle to get it away. So I, I said, "Smitty, forget a wicket. If I get Bravo or strike, it's a chance. If I get Bradshaw out, two tail enders walking in." And that was a discussion. He laughed and he looked at me and he said, "Do you okay?" I said, "I'll just get to feel this in, try and squeeze him a bit. You know, force the, the batsman to go over the top." which was probably the hardest shot to play in those conditions. And um, the rest is history. <laughs> I mean, Shal, you speak with so much, with so much experience and you've put a lot of thought into your craft. Um, as a player, you had proper plans set in place. How do you go about passing on that kind of work ethic to the current generation? Yeah, we, we're dealing with a with the younger group, so our transition phase, we speak a lot about that. I think um, now it's key for the preparation, I think for the guys to speak to them about cricket more, about their thought processes, and then obviously technically work on them. So we had a bit, uh, four, four weeks break now, so I could work with some of the players and I put them, go back home and work with their coaches, you know, communicating with them what they need to work on. Uh, so that for me was the key this past four weeks so we can work on the technical if there was a problem but um, with the younger generation it's all about preparation making sure that they come with the right attitude to the nets uh, getting the best energy and then working and harnessing those skills the bowler the bowling unit is going to be quite key here in the west indies um, are you happy with the personnel that you guys have in terms of players? The, do you think that you guys have the right balance of seam options along with spin? Because as you can see in this um, warm-up match, there's quite a lot of um, movement with the ball and you've got a few wickets that have already fallen. So um, what have you observed and what do you think that these conditions are going to play like? It is new to us. We haven't played in the rainy season, so this is their rainy season. When we came on tour, normally it would be a lot warmer, drier surfaces. Just from the first two hours I've seen um, in the warm-up game, there is a lot of movement. And we used to play with the kookaburras, now we're playing with the Duke. So with the Duke, there's a lot of movement, sea movement off the wicket, so, and it stays harder for longer. And if you look after the ball, if you maintain it, ball maintenance is key. If you can, obviously we can't use the live now, but we need to find a way to shine the ball. Um, it could be beneficial for us. And I think it's key for us to warm up game to see how the conditions are, because previously it's been different when we're here. 
Do you think that um, having had a look at what this warm-up match has already given you, which which side of your your bowling attack or your bowling units is going to be of most use? Yeah, it's, it's, I forgot to answer the other question. I think um, I think we've got a, the right balance. Uh, we've got four seamers, probably hoping to play in the first test, um, and then obviously your spinner becomes. So we we got options there. Normally we would go with three and then play with the spin. I think we've got the uh, personnel, yeah, because everyone is different. If you look at KG, uh, Anna, Lungi. Mm -hmm. Hey, different, and then you've got Vesu maybe, and you've got Keshav. Keshav always, he bowls well on any surface, so he can adjust, he's adaptable. But it's key for us here was to get used to the surface. It's, uh, this morning it felt like uh, England, but a lot more humid. <laughs> but it was overcast, and I've ne to be honest, I've never seen rain in the Caribbean. <laughs> So it's been three three days where it's just rained and it's been overcast. So I think personnel we got here is, and we got the backup as well. Speaking of the backup, there's quite a, a lot of youngsters in this team. How do you, during training sessions, and now that you guys are here in the West Indies, how do you keep them calm and keep the nerves working in the right way? Yeah, I think my demeanor is very calm, very laid back person. So. <laughs> But I want to bring the energy, I said, I always say to the guy, you never know what can happen days before leading into a test match. Um, you know, the guy can have a lack of form, so you need to be always pushing the guys that are playing in the playing 11. Um, you always look to better yourself, you know, by having good energy at the, at the practice attitude and then up, upskilling yourself, I think. We've got a young team here, yeah? the guys that haven't played a lot of first class cricket, haven't played a lot of international cricket. So it's all about competing and then bring that competition into the nets, into the warm up games. This is how you can improve yourself and say to the guy that's in front of you, I'm not here just to tour, I'm here to push you. And also, uh, youth comes with quite a lot of um, exuberance. So, yeah. how do you keep them? How do you keep them? focused on what on, on what's at hand and, and making sure that they don't do too much and they don't think too much yeah that's it, it's a problem with the, the new generation i call it they got technology so they they'll be looking at all this stuff and they'll ask which is good they want to improve themselves and ask questions for me it's it's getting the action repeatable doing the same things for longer uh, I think the captain speaks about playing boring cricket for long and I think in test cricket that's what you want to do day in and day out. Um, so it's, it's a process so I'll, I'll sit down with them and say listen yeah if you want to improve yourself you need to be able to have these disciplines and do the same thing for longer periods. Mm -hmm. So Charles, um, we've spoken quite a bit about the inexperience of the team, but you do have you have a handy um, number of experience. Tell us a little bit about the leadership of the team and the direction in which the team is headed. Yeah, team being, being something different. You know, he, he he demands professionalism from the players, discipline, you know, and team ethos and all that, which is a good thing, I think. It's something that we needed to revisit again and just from he, he's asked a lot of players, senior players, you know, um, to speak to the youngsters, to the youngsters, lead by example in practices and then when we have these meetings and more in a social way, um, the senior guys being able to speak to the youngster on, in cricketing terms, you know, like, uh, okay, I felt like today, you know, bowling no balls at the net, that's not the thing. Mm -hmm. And being able to address that, so he brings something different. Um, but his big thing is discipline and being professional. Mm -hmm. And your hopes for this tour? Yeah, it's test cricket. Um, I know we've, we want to turn that around. I think um, a win, a 1 0, a 2 0 no, no would be even better. But I'll take any win. I think if we can play good cricket for longer periods, put West Indian, uh, West Indian under pressure with bat and ball, you know, and keep at the discipline for long period, we can achieve that. 
T20 cricket is going to be different. They, they're quite a strong team. Um, it's going to be a good competition. I think we got a 3 2. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's all leading up to the World Cup. So we want to have a good team to win the series as well. Five games is a lot. So it's be against a good quality West Indian team. So it'll be a good challenge for our guys. Thank you.